when it comes to global learning, uh, I think it's really crucial. The world is, for various reasons, shrinking. Uh, we can travel around the world very quickly. Uh, telecommunication allows us to beam our ideas across the world instantaneously. And what we probably want in future generations is a youth who's equipped to deal with diversity and a youth that's equipped to deal with the complexity of different communities and different conflicts around the world. Uh, and so I believe that we should certainly encourage kids and youth and adults for that matter to constantly learn and relearn what they know about the world. I don't think so because there is right now there is nothing being done to to bring it to be to make it peaceful so I don't think there's gonna be peace um, I don't think that in this case it is unfortunately because it's based on a lot of misunderstandings and people don't seem to to want to resolve it um, it's not going to be attainable as long as the West is as greedy as it is, and it's going, it's their war monger, so. It's good, it's attainable, but it's very difficult. It's going to take, uh, I think, a long while before. Yeah. Um, well, I think that, yeah, maybe if, like, they try to, like, find a way to, like, talk about it, like, the differences and... In general, um, I find it's a conflict that's always going to be there. Um, East-West clash because peace can never arise when you take somebody else's land. They got that land through an agreement with the English. I have a lot of Arab friends. I've seen both sides. I have a lot of Jewish friends. And I still do not believe that they're allowed to take that land just because it's set in some old Bible. Peace is uh, far from... Uh, from being there, I find. Okay. I don't see any peace coming because, like, we've been, seeing, we've been seeing it for the past 60 years, so maybe in a hundred years. I think it's gonna get worse, much worse. Oh my God, I think it's something that's that's gonna never end, unfortunately. Well, the thing is that that conflict is bleeding through everywhere in the world. It's becoming global conflict more than anything. So. The West is part of the world as far as I know. Okay. I'm not saying that the West should, you know, unilaterally make decisions on what happens in the Middle East or whatnot, but we are part of the world and it's, it's and we have to uh, we have to hold to the, ourselves to just do something about it. Okay, um, I'm a very optimistic person. I hope I hope for change and I hope for peace. I hope um, I hope that peace could, uh, I hope they could achieve peace. Um, I would hate saying that nothing is possible because I do believe that um, uh, with dedication and people who, uh, who are working hard at this, for example yourself, uh, people that are aware of these, uh, of these issues and who put a lot of heart and, and, and work and, and dedication could make a difference. So I do hope that yes, peace could be attained. What I actually think happened, is going to happen, Maj, is there's going to be some kind of catastrophic, this is what I believe, there is going to be at some point a kind of catastrophic breakdown of this entire complex system we have built, at which point there will be a massive kind of coming to awareness of large numbers of people. The idea that you can get everything you need to know about life from a college, I think, is an idea that needs to be shattered. Uh, I think the colleges and the educational system will provide a framework for learning, but ultimately it's up to the student to pursue knowledge themselves. I think that the best and the most authentic form of knowledge is when a student goes out, figures things out on their own, and is able to look at different sources critically and make their own judgments without someone in front of a class telling them what to believe in or what to think about or how to speak. It's certainly part of it should be part of institutional policy to make information available. Not to spoon feed, not to force feed, but to, to teach. I mean, that's my job, I teach. But that has to be met no matter what it is you're teaching. Like, you're in my course right now in the context of a music course, all I can do is offer what I have. Uh, and 
to some extent, teachers have to be actors and you have to know certain theatrical skills and you have to market it and you have to sell it to people. But some people aren't going to be sold and some people aren't going to buy it. So you can give people all the information you want about the world situation, about the situation in the Middle East, about any situation. And if they just ignore what you're saying and refuse to take it seriously, you can't really accomplish it. And that's a function of a certain level of intellectual maturity. Intellectual maturity. Dude, what does intellectual maturity mean? Well, you see, I think that, um, in, in my opinion, I think it, it, well, it has something to do with consumerism, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, um, what do you guys think about global issues? I'm going to go get me a Big Mac. Idiot. But I mean, I personally think that, well, global issues yeah, are not cool. Definitely not cool. Where did he go? He's in the library. <laughs> I know, eh? Library. But he'll be back. Hey, what's up? Did you guys hear about Myanmar? You and who? Uh, 